Well, I am excited to be here today with Samantha McClure, and she is with Mountain Heritage High School, and they are one of our five innovation grant uh, winners, and we are really excited to be able to share among many of the practices that our innovation grant schools um, have lifted up to help support FAFSA completions. Samantha, welcome. Hi, it's good to be here. Yeah, it's great to be here. Um, so I'd love to hear a little bit more. Um, you know, last year when we were looking at, and last year by meaning school year for the class of 2021, your FAFSA completion rate was at 69.7%. We, um, we are really wanting to hear about the different ways um, that you guys are reaching out to your schools, um, to your students and your families. Yes. Um... Early and often is our motto here, like you're starting junior year, we're doing the FSA IDs. You're making that username, that password, um, and giving them a little taste of what senior year is going to look like and the importance of filling out a FAFSA application. So that's, that's been, a, we've started that probably three years ago, and that's worked well for us is, you know, the early and often have juniors start the process. That's great. Um, you know, I know a lot of folks say, gosh, in their junior year, we feel like we're packing everything onto our students. And when we think about the class of 2022, like they've really been out of school for other districts around North Carolina, may have had hybrid settings, may have not been in school. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the differences and how you're reaching out to students um, during pre-pandemic to pandemic times? Yeah, um, pre-pandemic, we at Mountain Heritage, um, our college support team, and then the counseling department, we meet with every student in this building to do a college and career activity twice every semester. So we have a room in our building dedicated called the Next Step Center, and it's dedicated towards our students working on that post-secondary education. So their junior year, we pulled them out of class and we're talking about the FAFSA. How do you pay for school? How do you get to college? And we help them make that username and password. We keep that username and password in our records because we know students are gonna forget that um, the following year, but we write that username and password down for them. Talk about how you're gonna use this their senior year. The pandemic was a little challenging, um, but we um, did this college and career day so every student got on a Google Meet, a Zoom, and we still created the FSA ID and we walked them through the process online. So we still wanted to keep that same tradition of, you know, even though we're in a pandemic and you're not in the school building right now, you're gonna go to college in the next couple of years. So we still had them do a Google Meet to go over those post-secondary education plans. Yeah, that's great. I love how when you talk about early and often and this next step center um, that really creates almost this college going culture. Can you talk a little bit about what that means to Mountain Heritage? Heritage? Yes. So um, at Mountain Heritage, we have an expectation that every student's going to complete the FAFSA. We know that not every student's going to go to college, but FAFSA is a gateway. FAFSA opens many doors for students. And I think when they see that number, oh my goodness, I'm going to get $6,000 free money to go to college. And some students don't even apply to college because they think I can't afford college. But when they see that number, like, wow, I can go to community college, or this is a good step, a chunk of money for a four-year university. Our teachers have buy-in. You know, we, I do, I let every teacher know, hey, we're doing this activity. Please encourage your students to fill out your FAFSA, their FAFSA. And teachers will come by and be like, hey, has Johnny filled out his FAFSA yet? So the culture at Mountain Heritage, you know, I couldn't do it without the faculty and staff backing the students up here at Mountain Heritage. Talk with me a little bit about how you share that information with teachers. I know that oftentimes when we do have, whether it's counselors that are early in their career or they've moved into a new school, they're really thirsty for ways, um, particularly as we look at different sizes of schools, how to encourage and foster that culture. Yes, um, definitely during faculty meetings, I will ask our principal, you know, can I have a chance to speak to the faculty about what's coming up next for seniors? You know, is it college application month? Is it financial aid month? Um, I do a series on our Instagram page called Make It Rain, and it's a scholarship and financial aid series 
where I do little videos using students and other faculty members saying, hey, the local scholarships are getting ready to open up or it's financial aid month. And it's just students look for those videos and it's called Make It Rain series. <laughs> I love it. I, I keep thinking of you like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> make it rain. Well, yeah. it sounds like you've got a lot of just multiple ways and targeted supports. Um, can you talk a little bit about data and then maybe how you use data to provide those targeted supports? Yeah, um, data is very important because we do a caseload. That's how we manage our students. So that individually, each student, you know, we kind of have fall on them. This is where they're at in the process. And we would not be able to track that without finish the FAFSA or using the GRACE data system from the College of Eyes and Corps. This is an easy way for us to identify which students or groups who've not completed their FAFSA yet. And it's a good way for us, um, my college advisor and myself, to set goals of, okay, this week we're meeting with students who've started the FAFSA, but they've not finished it. Next month, we're going to meet with the students who haven't completed their FAFSA or even started the process. So using, you know, the Grace the Data system that is provided by the College of Eyes and Corps and finish the FAFSA, that's the two ways that we use data to track students and where they're at in the process. Yeah, I love how you talked about how you set specific goals, whether it be not just about completion, but really breaking it down in the whole pipeline process to say, yeah. well, who is there from submitted to completed? Yeah. And then those that are just haven't started. Um, I think that that is a really important part to kind of break down those numbers a little bit so that it feels like you're making movement. Um, yeah. Gave that. Uh, is, is there anything else that you'd like to share with folks when thinking about um, even how you have leveraged your community partners? I, I know that yeah. you mentioned Mainland Community College. What are some ways? Um, oftentimes, I think uh, folks may not think immediately, gosh, a community college can really help to support in this effort. Yeah, um, having community partners have been really beneficial to us here at Mountain Heritage because we have several of our seniors and juniors are doing dual enrollment courses at the college, and sometimes they're not even stepping foot on our campus. So we noticed those students, they were disconnect. They weren't completing their fast for a college application. So we asked the community college, hey, can we come and talk to our students that are in the welding program? And we went over to that welding program class, and I think there were 10 students in the class, and seven out of the 10 that day completed their FAFSA. We brought pizza, we walked over to the campus, and engaged with those students. And also the community college communicates with me regularly, hey, the student's been selected for verification, can you help the student walk through that process, or can we come to your financial aid night? So that's been really beneficial to us. We use AB Tech as a partner to work with our um, Latino students on the barriers that can keep them from going to college. And he's an international advisor and students really trust him. He walks through the process. If you're undocumented, here's how we can help you. So he meets with every one of our students here that are undocumented to give them a chance to pay for college and go to college. So. Uh, that is really great to hear. I, I know that oftentimes we talk about meeting students and families where they are and really leveraging our partners to be able to do that um, is, is a really great thing to hear. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us today. And um, if, if anybody is interested, make sure that you go out to ncfirstandfasta.com, um, located on those sites. Uh, you'll see all of the innovation strategies as well as links to many of our innovation strategy videos. Thanks so much. Thank you.